less is more, and that's what it is. Consistency and less is more. The less amount of impact you give on a dog, the more chance you've got of actually doing anything for you. The reason I teach things the way I do is because I'm, I'm not saying others are hard, but a lot are a lot harder than me, the way they train. And I'm not hard on the dogs. Um, and that's just the way, because I enjoy them more. They're my mates, and that's, that's what I do, okay? Uh, as I said, you wouldn't beat your mates up or pull their ear or get, uh, you know, in the pub because you probably wouldn't have friends too long with them, all right? So just food for thought, okay? Everybody has got their own methods. My methods are less is more and a, a consistent approach. We, we work to a principle, we call it TA, so you remember, TA, T-A-R, and, it, and it's basically trigger, association, response, all right? You're the trigger. With training, the dog associates what you want and it will then give you that desired response. Hello, welcome to Andy Cummins Training Day. Um, I'm joined by two of the guys that are on Andy's course today. Um, I've got Wayne and Brad here. Um, Wayne, thanks for taking the time out to speak to us. Welcome. How have you found the course this morning? Yeah, it's been a great day. This is my uh, fourth time I've been after the two retriever days, and this is the second Spaniel day. It's um, it's just it's a great day. I mean, Andy Cullen, he's, he's a great guy. His um, his passion and, and enthusiasm really shows in, in his methods of training. And I think now, I mean, Lochin Way is, is the way to go. I think. What is it you've been? Uh, what did you make? What made you come on the course today? Is there something in particular you were looking to get out? Of? Um, yeah, I mean, with my Spaniel and and, and the Labrador. The aim is to, to trial them both, um, and it's just trying to get those last finishing touches, which Andy's a master of. Thanks for joining us. Um, Welcome. Tell us a little bit what you're looking for from today. Uh, very much like Wayne, just trying to sort of uh, polish up a few bits and pieces. Uh, we've got Tim here. He's four-year-old Cocker Spaniel, and um, you know we've, we've done a few bits and bobs on our own, and we're just trying to sharpen them up and sort of uh, and get the best out of the dog. And Andy's way of training, you know, is very good, very very soft on the dogs and um, it you know, helps the bond between the, the handler and the dog because they do work yeah. as your buddy, like Wayne's yep. just yep. said, or as your mate. So I know, I know you've, you've worked with Andy, but more on the pointer side, isn't it? Yeah, right? yeah, I work uh, pointers with Andy as well. I go up to Andy's um, and go up there with the pointers and run the pointers with him, um, or my pointers with him. And uh, so, yeah, so it's nice to come down locally and do the Cocker Spaniel as well. And you're starting to see the benefits of working with Andy and, and yes. helping you as a handler as well. Yeah, helping me as a handler, teaching um, a little bit sort of about ground treatment and things like that, so particularly if you're trialing stuff, you know, there's certain bits of information you don't always get told. Yeah. Uh, how to sort of look for the scenting conditions and how to handle your dog best in those kind of conditions, things like that. So yeah, no, that's one good. thing Andy is good at. It's not always just about the dog, it's also passing tips on to the handler yeah. as well, yeah. which yeah. Lot, lot, often people overlook. The reason I do the feather first is if I know they're nice and gentle on the feather, then the chances are that's going to transfer onto the fur. Right, we use feral pigeons a lot, uh, and we also use hen pheasants. We don't use cock pheasants, uh, they're too big. We sometimes use partridge, uh, and uh, I will give the dog a woodcock or two just to make sure they'll, they'll pick them, because obviously we want to make sure that they do. Right. What we do is we stick the head under the wing and we make a bundle. Then, then we get the elastic band and we secure it like that. Now, even if the tail feathers were a problem, we would pull them out or cut them off, whatever's easiest. And what that prevents, because some spaniels can be absolutely terrible retrieving to start with on game, it stops the dog picking up and pendulum the bird. Remember, we have to respect our quarry or winging it like that and, it cut, and then they drop it when they drag it through cover especially, and then they abandon game, and you don't want that. Do you understand? If you've got a dog that's reluctant to pick game, you can actually roll this down a slope, and with the momentum of the, the actual game going down the slope, the dog sat up the top, it almost G's them up to, to go and pick it. People's personas change when, when they're introducing their dog to game. They get all, oh, it's like the holy grail. There, hold, nightmare. You should be as low key and it should be as relaxed as possible. And the last thing to tell you all, never ever ever, when you're introducing a dog to cold game, place it there, somewhere open, like that, no chance. What I would do, and those of you who want to try it can, I would take this, I'd take the dog, 
A little memory, and a wee bit of cover. Not a big distance, and send the dog back. Two reasons for that. If the dog sees the game on, on the grass, on the, on the floor, it can run in. It's so enthusiastic to pick it, it goes bang, straight into the ribs and damages it. When it goes into the cover, it's got to hunt a wee bit for it and then gently pick it out of the cover and bring it back to you. So right away, just by how you set it out can make a huge difference. Are you with me? We will hunt you in pairs and we will do some other, other bits and pieces. We're actually going to use the wind as well to assist us. And all you're going to do is you're going to go from back here, you're going to walk towards that cover, throw it into the cover, saying that, the wind's kind of all over the place now. Bring the dog back, sit it up, get the distance thing in, go back, or get out, whatever you say. Is that all right? So you're not going to send it by your side. And remember, let the dog bring it to you. Don't say hold. That's the only thing I don't want you to do. And we sit it up halfway, and we come back to here. Because in actual fact, again, we're mimicking. The dog's had a contact flush. It's been shot. Now we're going to send it back for it. You with me? So it's all about pictures. Off you go. I've just started to... Uh get involved again quite heavily with the Spaniels. I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I uh, hope to be running one this year in field trials. I've uh, got a couple of youngsters that have come in. Uh, thoroughly looking forward to seeing how they progress and, and develop. Training wise, uh, we're doing more training days. Seem to be doing one or two about the country, um, which, is, uh, which is great. Uh, and also, uh, obviously, Get new clients along the way from a business point of view is very good you know good so just <clears throat> go through a little bit about the format of of today uh, and what you're training yeah I, I mean it's really just to to give people uh tips on where they maybe can improve in their handling skills and bring the dogs on you know because a lot of these dogs and these people they train elsewhere and we're taking nothing away from their trainers or what they're doing uh, it's just giving maybe a different approach you know what it's like sometimes uh, uh, it's nice to have a different pair of eyes actually um, looking at your dog and you know it, it maybe just help with that little bit of extra instruction you know yeah because one thing is you, you're very keen to work with the dogs but also the handler as well isn't there yeah uh, in particular you know if we take the spaniel day today you know there's a lot of people quite old-fashioned the way they train them they're, they're, they're quite dare I say it quite hard on them uh, we tend not to do that and try and show the folk methods that uh, make it let's say, more enjoyable, but still get similar results, you know. And uh, and it is little things that uh, when to use the whistle, when not to use the whistle. And, and obviously, you know, the dogs need to know right from wrong. Of course they do. Um, and uh, there's ways of showing a dog, you know, quite frankly, what you want and what you don't want. Uh, but you don't have to be pulling its ears off, you know. Yeah, no, well, I mean, I know from previous courses we've been on, they've all been always been well received. Um, and as you know, you've, you've obviously gained quite a few followings and word of mouth's got around and you've become quite, quite busy over the last yeah, few years. Yeah, I've been very lucky. I've been involved with uh, like, uh, yourselves. Uh, the British Shooting Show was a huge thing for, for me. It was, it was great to, and well received. And it was nice to, to kind of, for me personally, be a little bit out of my comfort zone, which is not a bad thing. Uh, but and actually engage with the general public, shooting people, and, uh, and, and introduce them to the Leokin way, so to speak. You I know? know the arenas were very busy during your time in a British shooting show, which is good. Yeah, we're looking yeah. forward to having you back at a British shooting yeah, show I'm in 2016. I'm, look I'm looking forward to it. And uh, as I say, we've got one or two new dogs, so hopefully we'll bring something new to the, the show, you know. Good. Well, again, Andy does training courses all around the country. Um, you can look him up on his website, www.leokingundogs.com. He's also available on all the usual social media sites. Uh, and for those of you who are unable to make it to any of his training days, he will be at the British Shooting Show in 2016. Um, we hope to see you there. Andy, thanks very much. Thanks very much. As always, Pleasure. A great day. Thank you. And uh, we'll speak to you soon. Thank you. Thanks Thank you. Lot.